You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 63 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Quote Time by Nick Jones. This is a pretty easy one, especially because it just happened. I'm only going to read the first line, and then I'll play the actual quote. I don't know if your dad sat at the edge of your bed when you were just a little boy and filled your ear full of all kinds of garbage... That's Brock Lesnar. Hell yeah, it is. Who is he talking to? John Cena. (laughs) Face to face? One of the best promos ever. No? It was recorded. Uh, I don't know if your dad sat at the edge of your bed when you were just a little boy and filled your ear full of all kinds of garbage. (laughs) (laughs) Little Johnny, someday you're going to grow up. But someday you're going to run into a guy that is going to knock your ass down. (laughs) You're going to stand up and he's going to knock your ass down. Is it picking it up? Yeah. And you're going to stand up and he's going to knock your ass down. (laughs) You're not going to get up, John Cena. I'm going to feel bad for you. Because for the last 12 years, that's what you've been living on. And then Brock Lesnar shows up. (laughs) (laughs) Mark my words. Night of Champions. Negative year last night. In the <laughs> I remember laughing at that part when you said in this universe. Over. Makes me want to cry. Almost brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so tight, bro. <laughs> Where's he from? Hell. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't know where he's from. It just, it just sounded like he had a country accent, like a little one, southern accent or something. So that was Brock Lesnar's promo, uh, basically talking some trash to John Cena. I don't know if that was, was that the, the promo for Night of Champions? It was, right? It was, yeah. Okay. And that's happening two weeks? Two next weeks. Sunday? Is it next Sunday? or the, I think it's two weeks. Yeah, it's the 21st or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cool. Looking forward to that. It's it's, an instant classic promo. That was the first pay-per-view that we um, watched. Yeah. It'll be our anniversary. So now, since we're recording at my house, I've got three young gentlemen who want to ask us some questions. Oh, man. I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, Basically, Logan brought it up a few podcasts ago, I think around 52. He's like, I want to ask you guys a question. So... They've been dying to come on here and ask us questions, or I might have forced them to. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with Jordan. Go ahead and come on over here, Jordan. Brock Lesnar was born in South Dakota, for those okay. of you who care. Okay, so looks like you've been prepared for this. So what would you like to ask the three best gamers on the sickest <laughs> video game podcast in the universe? Who would win, Spider-Man or Batman, and why? That's a tough one, because they're two super geniuses going up against each other. And it's two different universes. <coughs> in, in situations like this, I would have to say Batman. I would say Spider-Man. Why would you say Batman? Because he's so smart, and he's got all the... He's like, oh, I'm going up against Spider-Man, I'll just... Go ahead and review, reverse the gene mutation so he turns into normal human and then he would crush him. <laughs> but what would happen if it backfired and he turned into man spider? 
<laughs> then Man Spider obviously would be clouded with judgment and just go start attacking humans, and then the army would get involved and kill him. I think that he'd be too focused on fighting Batman with his acid web. I don't think he would. What do you say, Nick? I always say Batman. Batman's savage. He is. I really like Batman. He's my favorite DC guy. Spider-Man's one of my favorite Marvel guys, but I, I, I'm just biased and I like Spider-Man a tad bit better. Cool. Next question. Would you eat peanut butter off a tiger's tongue, or would you drink the blood of a kitten while it's alive? Oh, the tiger tongue. Tiger definitely. tongue. A live tiger, right? <laughs> yeah. A li- oh, yeah. I think a tiger would like to give me a kiss. It, you wonder if it has a rough tongue like a cat. It does. All felines do. That's like a tiger. That sounds dangerous. It A little bit, but it has peanut butter, and it's happy. Thank <laughs> And bring some, uh, what is it, Pe- cinnamon or pepper? Remember what Alan said? Tigers don't like cinnamon or something like that in the hangover. <laughs> yeah. Either way, tiger for sure. Is this just because you don't want to drink the blood of a cat? Like you don't want to see a cat harmed or something? Maybe, but I'd like to kiss a tiger. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Nick? I think that sounds a little too dangerous for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably, uh, I'd, I'd be willing to sacrifice a cat to, to not have to kiss a tiger. Yeah. Okay. My uh, danger is one of my many middle names. <laughs> Next question. Favorite TV show? Oh, man. Does Monday Night Raw count? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I'd say that right now. I mean, I, I, it's like the only show that I watch religiously anymore. That's... That's the only show that I watch as well. Um, if you're including all TV shows from when I was growing up and everything, that's a that's like a five page essay right there. But to keep it short and current, I'd say Raw. I'd say The Simpsons. I just got done watching some of The Simpsons marathon on FXX. Mm-hmm. It was so tight. I'm gonna have to say The Simpsons because I fell back in love with that show. W- were they new episodes, like newer seasons? Or? They were all the every single episode. I know. What, what did you watch specifically? Oh yeah, the the last few seasons. Okay. Because I, I caught the tail end of it. Okay. Great job, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> You're next. Yes. Okay. So what would you like to ask the three greatest podcasters on the sickest video game podcast in the universe? Who is your favorite superhero and which one of yours would kill the others? Which super other superheroes would they kill? No, like, I'm saying, I'm out of your sick. three, yeah. which one would win out oh, of killing man. all of them? That's a tough one. I, I'm going to go stock on this and just say Batman. I think I'm going to go a little bit nerdy and go Goku. He's a superhero? Yes, he is. Oh. He's in a Japanese comic book, and he's a superhero. Oh. Um, I didn't think of Japanese. Did but you want to change your answer? To Probably not. Howl's Moving Castle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking more like Guts or something like that. Oh, but. yeah. Guts is a savage. But I'd say Piccolo, but there's no way anyone could beat Goku. That guy's just too powerful. Even Superman can't stand any chance against him. Uh, they did uh, on YouTube uh, who would win, Goku or Superman, and they said Superman, but they had false facts. In the- uh, yeah, they did have false facts. Thanks Pe- for pointing that out. People are so. idiots on YouTube. They always do false stuff, and they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> That's one of my few pet peeves that I have. They're like, ooh, Goku could turn into Super Saiyan 5. No, he can't. Akira yeah. Toriyama didn't say he could go 5. Yeah, I don't even think he said 4, because he wasn't no. involved with GT. No. Morons. So, which one of yours would win? I'm pretty sure Goku's Go- gonna kill Batman. Goku would kill anybody. <laughs> Especially if they messed with his no. boyfriend, Krillin. No, Goku would be like, I'll let Batman train for a few years so he could get stronger and we could have a real fight. Dodge. Oh, <laughs> um, who would betray each other first? Mario and Luigi for Princess Pe- Peach. Why? Mm. Who would betray each other first, Mario or Luigi, for Princess Peach, and why? I think Mario would betray Luigi first, because Luigi doesn't care about women. I, 
He's all, he he wants that. He wants fame. And I don't. Luigi's kind of dark. I think if it's anything, he would do it as revenge on Mario yeah. for being in the limelight. So he would <laughs> just take Peach and betray Mario. He'd probably sell Mario out to the Koopa Troop again, and then just get rid of Peach. Just. He'd he'd have Mario watch him steal Peach and then just dump her. And like slit her throat or something. Something like that. In front of him, yeah. Dang. I always thought Luigi was the brains of the operation. That's why I would think that Luigi would be the first to betray Mario. Mario's just a jumper. Luigi's got the brains. Pretty much. And he's got legs on Mario, too. (laughs) He does. Um... Would you break all of your Nintendo games or play Doctor Doctor Jackal and Mr. Hyde for the rest of the year? I I'd, I'd make that sacrifice. <laughs> what play Doctor Jackal? I would. I I'm not going to break all my Nintendo games. Are you nuts? Well, that game completely sucks. I, I don't even know the point. <laughs> it's so what? I'm not going to break my Nintendo games over having to play another game for a whole year. <laughs> that would be pretty miserable, though. Like, that's the only game you could play the whole year? That would suck. Like, not even, like, on a, on a cell phone? You can't play, like, a mobile game? Oh, man. Then I, I just wouldn't play at all. <laughs> it's either you I'd get a life. <laughs> you you have to play it no matter what. Like, how long would I have to play it for? A whole a year. Just nonstop? I, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to no, sleep or you, eat? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to sleep, but they would have some, like, Drugs on you that kept you awake. <laughs> no, but oh, man. I lose my it's job. Dark. Yeah, <laughs> I can't lose my job. So you have to destroy every game in your collection. Then <laughs> look at Luigi over here trying to destroy all the games yeah. and turn on me. That's all. Good questions. Logan, get over here. He was waiting. He was on deck. Okay. So, from what I understand. Two of your questions you're going to ask to Brandon directly. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the giggles. Okay. You want to you wanna try to get out your first question? Yes. A little bit closer. Brandon, how is your rabies? <laughs> How's my rabies? I didn't know I had so, rabies. When you had to call mom and tell her about your rabies? Oh. Uh. <laughs> From episode 30, Twisted Shame. Oh, they've cleared up. They're okay now. Okay. They're in remission, but I'm pretty sure they'll pop back up pretty soon. Oh, man. Okay. Second, what is your guys' favorite video game? Oh, man. Of all time or or recently? Recently. I'd have to say Barbie for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, wow. That's a great game. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. No, honestly, I'd probably say, just off the top of my head, Final Fantasy IV. I had the most memorable story and the most memorable characters for me. I'm going to say, <clears throat> within the past couple years, <clears throat> I really enjoyed probably Batman Arkham Asylum. I'm going to go, say, Bioshock. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Okay. <laughs> the next one is... How it? What? How is? How is your balls here? <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> Remember the last a few episodes? Where you guys had, where Matt and you had a penalty, uh-huh. and you guys had to trim your balls hair and put it on your balls eyebrows. Hair. Yeah, I remember that. And I didn't have any, so I had to use Matt's. <laughs> <laughs> so your your answer is the same. The same. Yeah. They're the same. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so treasure hunting yep i have a five dollar credit that i'm using do you have treasure i do i have one item what do you have is it another dragon ball card <laughs> no i didn't find any more of those but i did do some 
thrifting yesterday in Vacaville. Thrifting. Th thrifting. Oh, Nintendo 64 game. Wow. How much is that worth? I don't know. I forgot. To Zelda. Look. <laughs> the, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. Gray cart, not gold. Yeah. Let's not get all jizzy on each other. <laughs> jizzy. 22. Wow. Now this is only worth $10, but I got such a good deal on it. I have to use it. Oh, wow. Would you get it for free? 50 cents. Where at? Yard sale. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Final Fantasy 3 for the DS. So, let's pull up this prize and punishment list. Shout out to the Dice Roller app. <laughs> Hope it's lucky for me again. What's this going to be? Eight punishment ass punch <laughs> or six still random treasure <sighs> let's get this ass punch out of the way <laughs> here let's see what your prize is because you might get to do a double ass punch <laughs> ten taxi two Five dollar treasure bank. I'll take a taxi. What are you doing? I'm wrapping my wrist. Oh, you're gonna have me with a buckle? No. I just don't want my wrist to get hurt again. <laughs> can you do it somewhere here so that you can hear it on the podcast? Brandon's wrapping his wrist with a belt. Belt. And he's gonna hit me with a buckle. <laughs> because he won't hit you as hard. Uh, I think I wanted to have him steal a random treasure. <laughs> <laughs> he pressured me into it. <laughs> That's heck of tight. So Brandon gets to steal a random treasure. As long as you have two the next time. Okay. Okay, so we've got a few more YouTube videos up i've got up to episode 40 that's the movie trivia game that was hosted by nick that was a really cool movie movie trivia challenge has kind of a depressing punishment because brandon didn't get to eat any of the yummy ass ice cream that nick brought over <laughs> uh, but that was still cool and then episode 39 lulu versus tiffa Check that out, our favorite Final Fantasy characters. Uh, go and follow us on Instagram. Uh, like us on Facebook. We're at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia on both. Follow us on Twitter as well. We're at NES Hunter. Podomatic or iTunes. Go ahead and subscribe to us. Then you don't have to look for our link every time. You can just, boom, subscribe. And every time we drop a new podcast on Saturday, you'll instantly get it to your phone. How convenient is that? So let's best open this top five. Top five. Top five games with Mario in them. So let's see who gets to go first and start us off. Nick gets seven. I get eight. Brandon gets four. So Brad, Brandon, and Nick. Number five on my list probably wouldn't make many people's lists. But it made mine for sentimental reasons. It's going to be Mario Party for the Nintendo 64. Fuck that game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is the first video game I really played with my wife when we were teenagers. You could play on a giant board game and do mini games and win coins. With the coins you buy stars and whoever has the most stars at the end of the game wins. 
The way you played some of the mini games, though, really hurt your thumbs and the palm of your hand. Yes. <laughs> uh, you rotate the analog, and it's just so rough. You got to do it fast to win. And I know Brandon got some blisters from that. Oh, I cut up my palm pretty bad with uh, having to rotate it just to win, I guess. I usually came out on top, though. Yeah, so Mario Party. Uh, one time... This was during the summer where my wife's father, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and sister went out of town, and I was just let loose. I got to stay the night for the whole week. It was two weeks because it was during summer vacation, and they were out in England, so I know they weren't coming home. Man, I could tell you some stories that happened over those two weeks that would really give you guys some boners. But you were underage, so it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think I was 18. <laughs> you think? And she was 17. Oh, man. Don't admit that on radio. No. It happened during the summer, so we were both 17. But I won't share those stories with you because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Number five on my list. Hails from the Nintendo Entertainment System and is the second best boxing game on the NES besides Ring King. And that's Mike, <laughs> Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Uh, I originally thought that Mario was not the referee, but after doing some research, he's a referee. Oh, God, yes, he is. So that's my number five is Punch Out. We've talked about it on episode seven and other podcasts. Just a great game that happens to have Mario in it. Yep. My number five was released in 1992 for the SNES. Girls swoon over this game. It's the original Super Mario Kart. Oh man, they do. Yes, they do. Uh, particularly now with the Mario Kart Wii, they just they get wet. They right? do. I was, was going to say. That game, man. It's like an oil slick. <laughs> <laughs> None of that would have happened without the original. Uh, I had Many hours playing this game uh, in, in my adolescence. There was a battle version of this game where, like, each you, you, each person would have their own window. There's four windows on the screen. And each racer would have, like, three little balloons yep. tied to the back of their cart. And if you tagged them with, like, a shell or a banana or whatever, they'd lose one of their uh, balloons. And the, the last person who had balloons left wins the, uh, the battle. I've never really seen anything like that. In any of the later Mario Kart games, I mean, there, there was always some sort of battle type thing, but it was just never played quite as smoothly, in my opinion. So just the the very original Mario Kart, such a fun game, and it started a whole line of Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart series of games. So uh, that's my number five, is the original Mario Kart. Red turtle shells. God, yes. Homing. <laughs> but Dude. it was cool that, like, you, you can... Uh, Tell when they were coming for you, like if you were armed with a banana or one of the green shells, mm -hmm. you could drop it behind you to try to block it. But even then, you'd have to do it at the, the exact right time to, to block one of those homing shells. Or you'd have to like take a corner real quick to try to get like make it hit a, hit a wall or something like that. It was just a, it was a really cool game. I loved it. Did you ever see the blue turtle shell on the DS versions? No, no I never played it, it on the it DS. Would, it would seek all the way to whoever's in first place. And then blow them up, and it'd, like, waste five or ten seconds. Yeah, they have that in Wii, I believe. Oh, they do? They might even have it in the 64 version, or the uh, the GameCube version, I don't know. Double Dash. <laughs> I know they have it in Wii, though. It's like a blue shell that has yeah. spikes and it has wings on it. That's right. Yeah. That one's the, the nuts now. And you only get it when you're in, like, seventh or eighth place, uh -huh. too. Number four on my list is going to have to be Super Mario Brothers 3 for being in The Wizard and for being a very, very <laughs> fun game. Uh, just when it came out, I remember it was leaps and bounds above Mario Brothers 1 and it just took things to a whole new level. So there's no way I couldn't leave that game off the list. You know, the eight different worlds, like s ten levels in each world and just trying to fight your way to Bowser's army is crazy. So that's number four on my list. It's a really good game. I like that there are secrets all over the game. Like they have the P-Wings and the... Um, oh, man. They have the whistles hidden throughout the, the game. 
you obviously know where the first whistle is because of the wizard. I don't know how he knew that it was up there, but he did. He was a freaking genius, I guess. But it was a really fun game. I love that game as well. It didn't make my list, but it's on. It's it's a great game. Number four on mine. Uh, this game you have the option to not pick Mario at all. Super Mario Brothers Two. And that's very refreshing and nice. <laughs> I always hated ma having Mario shoved down my throat in all of his games. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get the option to not play as him, it's pretty cool. Uh, playing Mario in a Mario-based game, even though it really wasn't a Mario-based game, it was another one, was awesome. And that was my number four. Playing Mario? What? You said playing Mario in a Mario-based game? Not playing Mario oh, okay. in a Mario-based game. That game, it's very quirky. It's different. It's, it's, you know, it's based on a whole different game in itself, but it's, I like it a lot. And it has the best enemy in the world, Shy Guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best Mario enemy to date. And it has the best food in all the video games. Vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> My number four is from the SNES, released in 1991, uh, the original Super Mario World. Really, really cool game. It played so much smoother than anything that it came before it. Uh, Mario's movement and Luigi's movement was just so reactive to whatever you were doing on the on the remote control. It was amazing controls. Um, it introduced you to Yoshi. I mean, like him or hate him. He is a pretty cool character, and he does allow you to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, he has, Mario gets the cape in this game. The cape is really cool. Again, uh, the controls were just amazing on it. Whenever you were flying through the air, you could just do so much different stuff. You could do like a dive bomb, or you could just float up there by leaning back a little bit. Um, there's the whole star road system yes. where you could warp from one, uh, one area of the map to the other. There's all sorts of different, um, secret levels that you could play in the, in the star road. Different versions of Yoshi, a red Yoshi, blue Yoshi, yellow Yoshi, and of course the original green Yoshi. Um, lots of cool music as well. Um, yeah. And it also brings back a lot of memories. My Uncle Sam and I used to play this game a lot. Uh, he has since passed, so good memories with Super Mario World for me. That is one of the few times an advertising commercial has ever worked on me when I saw the... Super Mario World commercial with the Super Nintendo. I was like, I have to have this. <laughs> and our grandma or our mom bought it for us for like Christmas. That's like a tight. Yeah. One thing I... That was actually number three on my list. Uh, I did want to add on, if you beat all of Star Road and went through the special, the whole game changed. The little Koopa Troopas had Mario masks. It was a, like a whole new game. And... One other thing I loved is you could tell if the level had two different exits or not because uh, the the level would be yellow. If it was yellow, it's just single exit, but if it's red, you, there's secret exits. So that that was cool. There was one secret exit where like your the levels on a bridge over that. That's the one. The bike. last one we found. Yeah, That's so crazy. Like I was like, what the hell? What, what am I missing here? And finally, you realize that you have to float under it with Yoshi and then jump off of Yoshi right at the right time. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I did. Oh, go ahead. The, the the vine comes up out of the lake or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah it's and really cool. Because when you beat the game, it shows you all the enemies, and there was an enemy that was a torpedo, and we never. That's the only place you fight it was in that level, the secret level. And I loved killing Yoshi, <laughs> jumping off and throwing him down the pit. But that blue, the blue Yoshi was savage. Yeah, it was. I it was think flying. when yeah, when when you're holding an enemy or something in your mouth, he'll fly. Yep. Yeah. What did Yellow Yoshi do? It created sand. I think when you jumped. That's retarded. That's dumb. <laughs> That's lame. <laughs> I like how, like, whenever to make Yoshi stick out of his tongue, Mario just hits him in the back <laughs> of the head. Donkey punch. <laughs> <laughs> My number three is Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, another game where Mario is just an accessory. <laughs> He's just sitting there on the back of Yoshi. All he does is cry. <laughs> Uh, it was released on August 5th, 95 in Japan, 
October 4th, 95 in America, October 6th, 95 in Europe. Uh, while a stork carries two babies across the sea, the evil magic Koopa Kamek emerges and attempts to steal both of the babies. Kamek man manages to grab baby Luigi. Mario probably threw him at Kamek so that he would take that one instead of baby Mario. But, <laughs> and baby Mario falls onto the island in the middle of the sea, which is Yoshi's Island, home to all the Yoshis. He lands on a green Yoshi who has apparently just taken a stroll. Imagine if he decided to sleep in that day where Mario would be... <laughs> <laughs> dead. <laughs> uh, Yoshi's Island is a fun game. Uh, takes all the Mario mechanics and enhances them by letting you not play as Mario. I was curious when uh, that game was released in Europe and Japan. I'm glad you pointed that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, my number three is the uh, new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Really freaking fun game. Uh, again, I was mentioning at the how good the controls were on the Super Mario World. <laughs> Somehow it even got better on this game. It's just so reactive to every little twitch that you make on the on the remote control. It's amazing. Uh, it's a fun game. You can play with multiple players. Um, most of the time, the per person you're playing with will be an inferior player, and they have the option of getting in this little bubble thing, and they can just float throughout the level until you're ready for them to to be released. You have to go pop their bubble in order to make them become reactive again. Um, beautiful game. Fun to look at. Lots of cool colors. Lots of cool imagery. Um, yeah. Don't have much more to say about it. It's the new Super Mario Bros. Wii. That's my number three. It's amazing. Yeah. Number two is going to have to be a game that was released on the GameCube. No, it's not Super Mario Sunshine. It's Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Old Door. This RPG style game where Mario takes the form of paper. The battle system is unique, but my favorite part is the dialogue. There are so many wacky quotes. And of course I have a few for you guys. All said by Bowser. <laughs> I love fried eggs. Love them. Crystal stars. Those sound like a great world conquering tools. I want them. <laughs> and here's my favorite. I don't know anybody named Gonzalez. Stop speaking in riddles, you chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> the battle system, you kind of play in front of an audience, like you're in a play. And the more flashy moves you pull off, the more people come and watch the play. And it does that on every single battle, so... Also, Mario turns into a paper airplane, a little toilet paper roll. Uh, you could turn sideways to go into bars. You then, could wipe your ass with him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was my number two. It's a fun game, and it's got a fun story. Is that the introduction of Rock Hawk? <laughs> uh, I think so. Rock Hawk is heck tight. <laughs> He's a uh, like a WWF character in the game. He's a champion. He wears a belt. It's hecka cool. I missed out on pretty much everything GameCube related, so I haven't played that. Sounds cool though. Is there a Paper Mario in '64? I don't think so. Yeah, that's Is where it, it started. Oh, um, I missed that too. Then. Yeah, I so did I. I didn't play it, but um, if you ever have time, I have it. Yeah, cool. Hopefully, so number two on my list is Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> uh, it was the first game in the Mario franchise to be released on the GameCube. It was released in Japan, September 14th, 2001, and then two months later in America. And then in Europe, it went, you had to wait for May 3rd, 2002. <laughs> I'm sure they were heck of mad. <laughs> they were. <laughs> That we want a Mario <laughs> <laughs> or Luigi. The game takes place in a haunted mansion oh, when Luigi wins a contest that he never even entered. He told his brother to meet him there to celebrate his victory. Luigi searching for his brother, who came to the mansion earlier but has gone astray. To help Luigi on his quest, an old professor named Elvin Gad or E. Gad. <laughs> has equipped him with the Poltergeist 3000, a vacuum cleaner used for capturing ghosts, and a Game Boy Horror, a device used for communicating with EGAD. 
<laughs> Such a fun game. In order to catch a ghost, like they'll be running away while you're sucking up them in the vacuum, and you have to hold the controller the opposite way they're running. And so they keep switching, so you have to keep um, reacting. It's super fun. It's a uh, Easy to complete, but hard to master because there's different secrets and stuff. But it's just an amazing game. And in the sequel, Mario is trapped in a painting. And you only see him like twice in the whole game, which is hecka tight. <laughs> <laughs> is your number one Mario is missing? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been if I played that game. That's funny. Uh, my number two is uh, was released in 2007, for, also for the Wii. Uh, yeah, it was the Wii. Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, cool game. Kind of takes after uh, the Mario 64 in that it's... W would that be considered third person? Because you can see the character. Uh, third person, so it's shot from behind uh, Mario, uh, which is kind of interesting. Most of the Mario games are not like that. They're mostly side-scroller type games. Um I really had a ball playing this game. Uh, they really did a good job with uh, switching gravity from you know upwards to downwards to sideways. In fact, a, a couple of my friends, Mike Bunton most notably, he I tried to let him borrow this game, and he said he got nauseous after like five minutes because he just couldn't handle all the gravity switches. I was like, <laughs> dude, it's it's a fun game, and, and it's it's challenging because you know everything gets switched back and forth. You have to, you know adjust the way that you're playing based on uh, the camera angle and the gravity pull on Mario. Yeah, another game that I, I just love playing. It's fun to find all the little secrets in there. Uh, there were toadstools all over the place, which was kind of annoying, but they're pretty... It was it was a really fun game, and I, I love that game. It's my number two. I, I also like the Mario Galaxy 2 as well. Very cool game. Which, which is a better one? Uh, I remember liking one more, uh, but... I played through both of them all the way. Yeah. I love them so much. So I like the boss battles. Yeah, boss battles are cool. Yeah. All right, number one. Got to hand it out to a game released on the Super Nintendo, released in 1996, Super Mario RPG: The Legend of the Seven Stars. Hands down, the best Mario game in my eyes ever created by Nintendo. Squaresoft and Nintendo franchises come together to make this amazingly fun game. It's a Final Fantasy story told with Mario characters. Can't get better than that. Some of my favorite parts, when you run to get the Starman in the game and you actually get it, you get to kill all the enemies just by running into them. You don't have to do the random battles. You just kill them straight out. It's cool. Um, after you kill all the enemies, then you could level up however many levels. So... That's also fun, the leveling up system. Uh, so what happens is Bowser gets his ass handed to him by a giant sword named Smithy. He gets an eviction notice <laughs> in the form of an ass whipping. Smithy <laughs> takes his castle, and you actually see the Koopa clan broken and fallen. Uh, I kind of like that part of it. They were all scrambling, trying to rally together to make one final push. So Bowser get, rallies his troops. There's only a few left. Once he gets to the castle... He loses again. When they fell, just like Piccolo and Goku had to do against Raditz, Bowser, the villain, teams up with Mario. <laughs> what he actually says is he makes Mario an honorary member of the Koopa Troop to go get his castle back. That was the best moment of the game for me, to actually see Bowser and Mario team up and go fight. The game is filled with mini games, invisible treasure chests, tons of secrets, and made Bowser a hero. For all those elements... And many others, this is definitely a top, the best Mario game ever made. As far as Gino goes, <laughs> overrated. <laughs> uh, this game had so many great features, I feel that we could do a whole show about this game. That was my number one. Uh, oh, yeah, deviating from my Mario hate list, uh, this game put it had to be on there. The collecting of the frog coins. Um, was amazing the secret final fantasy boss chaos i think it was uh was awesome and just having fun trying to find all the items the little golden goombas that gave a ton of experience uh the birthday cake that attacked you uh or it was a, the wedding cake huh that was hecka tight From booster yeah 
And like Brad said, the mini games were all unique and fun. And Malo was he he liked men. <laughs> <laughs> But other than Malo and Gino, it was such a good game. Yeah, I think I always had Bowser, Mario, and Peach in my party. Mm -hmm. Too bad Luigi wasn't in it. Oh, and one other thing, you could find Samus and Link in that game. I have to play through that again. I, pl I remember playing through that uh, when I was a child, but I don't remember the details of it, so... Definitely another one I have to go back and play through. I wonder if it's on the Wii. I, it network. is. Oh, is it? it is. Okay. I know that it is. I've seen it on there, and I keep on saying that I want to play it. But. Th that's the thing is, there's all these cool games that we want to play again, but there's just so little time. Yeah, I know. Uh, my number one was already mentioned by Brandon's The Mar Brothers 2, released in uh, 88 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. When was it released in Japan? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> As Doki Doki Panic? Yeah. <laughs> As Brad mentioned, it was released uh, under a different name in Japan. Uh, it's not a true Mario Brothers game, which might be uh, why it's so great, I guess. Um, it was, well, as we said earlier, it's just very unique. It plays very uh, much differently from all the other Mario Brothers games. It just sticks out for me. And another game that I have a lot of nostalgic memories uh, with uh, makes me happy every time I play it. And I love Luigi can beat that game with Luigi with my eyes closed. <laughs> He's such a savage. Uh, that's my number one is Mario Brothers 2. <clears throat> do we want to do a consensus on this? or? I think it's going to be pretty tough to do a consensus. I mean, we can. We could try. Well, it sounds like Mario RPG is going to be number one. Even though, I, I mean, I don't remember it, but I do remember it being very good. That's probably the most important thing. What I find interesting is that uh, no one had um, Sunshine on there. I actually never played that. Have you guys played it? Yeah, I, I played probably a quarter of it, and it is a really cool game, but I didn't play it enough to make it my, on my list. I really like the graphics on the game. They're sleek, and um, it translated well with the GameCube. When you There's oil everywhere. When you clean it up, it looks really amazing how it just dissolves and stuff. There's, it's pretty hard because there's some uh, bonus stages where you lose your backpack, so you have to play through a heck of hard side-scrolling Mario level, which is awesome, um, but sometimes it's just too difficult. Uh, but yeah, it's a good game. Mm -hmm. I, I liked it. No golf? <laughs> no. Mario was in the original golf game. He was. <laughs> All sorts of games that he's been in. Some of them better than others, obviously. Smash Brothers Melee was good. That yeah. almost made my list. There's a lot of really good games. It's, it's It would be hard to come up with a consensus mm -hmm. to top five. So let's just uh, save Mario RPGs number one. Maybe leave it at that. That's cool with me. Yeah. Cool. Mario Brothers 2 is clearly number two. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. The introduction of Birdo. <laughs> I know. And the Shy Guys. And the uh, Eyes Wide Shut Birds. The little things that hop up along <laughs> those. That's where Kubrick got his inspiration for that for that character. <laughs> Remember those guys that chased you around whenever you picked up a key? Oh, man. Kind yeah. of like that, too. <laughs> Stressful. Is that what it's called? Oh, no, you're so I, stressful. I thought you said that the name of it was... Uh, I don't know what the, the character's name is. But it is stressful. Like, you just throw the key so it'll stop chasing you, and then when you pick it up, it'll start chasing you again. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I don't have a Jerk of the Week, but... I have a reason for not having a Jerk of the Week. Why is that? Because you challenged me to do this... What is it? Positive thoughts for... <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> So Brad challenged me to do like three positive thoughts on Facebook for like a week or something like that. Is that what it is? Yeah, for seven days. And I'm choosing not to do that. But in lieu of my not doing that, I will uh, not do a jerk of the week this week because I'm being positive. <laughs> Mike uh, bailed out on it as well, Mike Bunton. And I almost 
Did I post it? I, I was going to say, oh, I heard that if you don't do it, you die. No, oh, you man. Post it. Like from the ring. <laughs> but I, I decided, I, I actually had it written out, but then I X'd it all out and deleted it. I think you do die if you don't do the water, the, the frozen ice bucket challenge or whatever. Oh, yeah? If you get challenged and you don't do it, you die. Oh. Yeah. I haven't gotten challenged for that. <laughs> That's I've gotten, why you're still here. I've gotten challenged and I haven't done it. Oh, man, you're heck of lucky. <laughs> Death will be coming soon. No, I think Death sees me doing DDP yoga and he's like, <laughs> I'll back off. I'll ease off on this guy. Have you guys seen my, my positive things? Karen at first didn't get it. <laughs> but what Brandon has been doing, he's been listing positive things and then at the end he'll throw in someone that had AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> like the first one he put Magic Johnson... <laughs> And then the second one was Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. <laughs> you things, people who have AIDS make you feel better. No, but they it? have H. They're HIV positive. Oh, they're pot. Got it. And okay. Jamila didn't get it at first until I said Magic Johnson, and then she was like, "Oh, that's just wrong." <laughs> Did you do that today yet? Not yet. I haven't done my positive you, one. Yet you today. haven't thought about who has AIDS. Ryan White. <laughs> The little kid that died of AIDS when we were in, what, fourth grade or something. Didn't Freddie Mercury die of AIDS? Oh. It's a little dark. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll do one with just his music and leave it at that. The cast of Rent. <laughs> <laughs> they all died of AIDS? Well, in the movie, or the play. Uh, oh, really? I don't think they all die, but like 90% of the characters in that play oh i didn't know that <laughs> that is kind of dark so that'll do it for episode 63 of treasure hunting for nostalgia look forward to next episode where we've got episode 64 foreshadowing maybe this is brandon this is brad this is nick happy hunting <laughs>